trust him. Trust him Lee from Native Project and from Twitter. I'm in the same team with Evan, who talked about Binagle. So in this talk, I'm going to talk about what's the current status of Neti and what it, uh, in what direction we are going toward. So just in case uh, someone doesn't know what Neti is, uh, it's a Java framework, um, which means you build your application using Neti. It's like a library. And if you write a network application using Neti, it, is very simple. So you can write a very complicated network application um, very easily, uh, no matter what it is. Um, and the resulting application is highly performing. And um, in many cases, some frameworks, uh, in some frameworks, the application, the resulting application, is not easily maintainable. But in this, in Netis case. Uh, the resulting application is very easy to maintain. And also, it employs asynchronous and event-driven paradigm. So you end up building very high performing. And uh, when writing a server application, the event-driven paradigm is often very useful when dealing with uh, incoming traffic, how popular Netty is. Um, Somebody might think it, I'm just bragging, <laughs> but uh, I, I just want to say that this project is very organic and it has many forks. And there are many people who contributed to the project. And actually, those people, those 120 plus people, are not from the same company, but are from many different companies in different countries. For example, the core contributors are me and Norman Maurer, who is going to talk about netting performance shortly after. Uh, and we are from different countries, and we work for different companies. And we actually met today, physically, just today, <laughs> until uh, today. So in, in the history of this project, we have never met before. But the project is going really well. So I'd, I'd say it's a very good example of open source. <laughs> and the project is a very popular Java project, and it has been around for a, while, for a long while. So I'd say it's a very sustainable project. So if you are a little bit worried about adapting this project, you don't need to worry. So what do people use it for? Uh, people use it for everything. So. In many cases, people use it for serving HTTP requests or sending HTTP requests to, the, to other backends. And also, they use it for instant messaging. For example, uh, in Korea, we use it for an instant messaging service. And we use it for push, push servers. And the service has more than one, hmm, probably 100 mil, more than 100 million people are using it. So I think it's pretty high performing. And also, people use it for multiplayer games. So when you Google about some netty exceptions, you'll see a very popular game is popping up. <laughs> and also, some people use it for storage and database. And some people even abuse it for high frequency trading and also for media streaming and software update distribution. Uh, for the complete list of the companies and projects who are using Netty, uh, you can check the link in this slide later. And then to talk about the future of the project, uh, we should also talk about the history of the project. So when did it start first? Um, so it started in 2001 uh, when I was a university student. I was working for a small company, a startup. At that time in Korea, there was also a bubble boom. <laughs> so I was hired to write some server and also a client to communicate with 
SMS servers. So uh, in Korea at that time, there were five carriers who were using five different protocols to send SMS messages. And I had to write them all within a week. <laughs> so although it was seemingly impossible, I made it. <laughs> and uh, it was a start. So I realized that I could simplify a lot of writing network application. And then I came up with the initial release of Netty. At that time, Java didn't have non-blocking I.O. So I emulated non-blocking I.O. using blocking I.O. And then three years have, has, have passed. And then Java and I.O. was getting a little bit of traction, although some people were arguing that we don't need it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so finally, I released a major revision of Netty, which was written in, written with Java and I/O, and starting that point, Netty was gaining more and more traction. Uh, so it became more and more popular, and then it was 2008. Netty three was up. So some people here might still be using Netty3, better migrate to Netty4. But anyways, it was first released in 2008, October. Uh, at the beginning of the project, there was no HTTP nor WebSocket, anything else. Because, you know, WebSocket was not existent at that time, anyways. <laughs> so in, until now, we received a lot of contributions. And I also added a lot of new features, like HTTP. And some people contributed WebSocket. And Twitter also kindly contributed speedy 2 and 3 support. And also OpenSSL-based SSL engine, uh, which makes uh, SSL much faster in Java comparing to the stock Java SSL engine. So there were so many additions. Some of them were from me. Some of them were from Norman. Some of them were from Twitter or some other companies. Uh, the, thing, the important thing is that uh, they were from many different parties. They were organic. So the project went pretty well. And, but t it was 2008, 3.0 was released first time. And now it's 2014, which means 60 years have passed since then. We need some, we learned a little bit about our mistakes since its early days. So what did we learn? So we learned object allocations are expensive. There were times that people believed that uh, object allocations are cheap enough, like it's O1. But in reality, it's more garbage, garbage anyway. So if you make a lot of garbage, then your virtual machine will pick up. So it matters. Also, when you allocate a buffer, then let's say you allocate a 16 kilobyte buffer. Uh, in, in theory, it should not take a lot of time. But in Java, uh, byte buffer has to be filled with zeros. So you have to go through the whole buffer to fill it with zeros, which means a lot of CPU cycles and memory bandwidth is consumed, which is not a good idea. Because when we write a network application, we usually allocate a buffer and then fill it with something else. So filling the buffer with zero and then filling it again with something else doesn't make much sense. So we had to eliminate that cost. And also, we also found that some constructs we built are very useful some other use cases. For example, byte buffers are also, byte buffers are very useful for uh, manipulating a series of bytes. And also, in Java, there's, also, there's future, but the future was not listenable. Uh, in Java 8, it's now listenable, but 
for a long time, it was not listenable at all. So even if you, Java had future, you were not able to listen to it without blocking. But NetEase future implementation was listenable, and thus it was fully asynchronous. So they were pretty useful for those who are looking for complete asynchronous operations. And also, we realized that um, thread model is very important. Um, in Netty3, I was a kind of building thread model in an, in an ad hoc manner, which means there's, a, there's no well-defined thread model. So for example, in some cases, when you invoke an I.O. operation, it is invoked directly. Your, your I.O. handler is directly invoked by your caller thread. But sometimes it is called by Netty thread. So there was no consistent rule for that. Um, so it was sometimes very confusing. A good example of that is SSL handler, which enables SSL encryption uh, in Netty connection. Uh, because there were so many deadlocks. So we had to patch here and there and here and there and here again, there again. So after we fixed this in Netty4 by defining much better thread model, its, it's line of code decreased by 50%. So it tells the story. <laughs> so from what we learned from three, we released 4.0. So what it did is to reduce the number of object allocation dramatically. Uh, we almost did almost did, did almost everything to reduce the object object allocations. For example, uh, in three, we allocated a new event object for every single I/O event but we don't do that anymore. And we also introduced reference counting to byte buffers and introduced buffer pools. So you might have read about the Twitter engineering blog post about reduced GC at Twitter with Netty4. Uh, we, re we reduced quite a lot of GC overhead from these two uh, changes. And then, because some people were not interested in networking layer, but only in uh, buffer implementations, so we modularized Netty into multiple modules. And also, we introduced a well-defined thread model to remove the pain, our, pain in our butt. And also, we got a lot of feedback from users. Like some APIs are not easy to use. Some APIs are not uh, intuitive. Some APIs need more uh, documentation. So we accepted those challenges and improved our API user experience. Uh, personally, I believe API experience is almost everything in a framework or libraries. So we really focused on that area while we introduced for that O. And also, uh, we added a new transport code called native transport for Linux, which uses EPO directly using JNI. Um, this is particularly um, exciting because previously we were using Java and IO to perform IOs. But as you know, Java virtual machine is an abstraction layer over operating system. And Java and I.O. is an abstraction layer of I.O. of the underlying operating system. So if you use Netty, it's an abstraction over abstraction over abstraction over whatever. <laughs> so you don't really need that if you need JNI, if you use JNI. So we did that. And it also gave us quite a bit of performance improvement. And now we are thinking about 4.1. Uh, 
uh, we, re we recently released 4.1 beta 1, which is exciting. And um, so in this release, we, we are going to maintain the backward compatibility, but we're going to add a bunch of new features based on uh, the stable API 4.0 provides us. So we're going to add more protocols. For now, we have Amcache, binary Amcache, and DNS, MQTT from Facebook, Stomp, HA proxy, and also we provide an interesting features like a streamed XML and JSON, so you can stream an infinite XML or JSON document uh, between two nodes. Also, we are going to introduce a synchronous DNS lookup, which is one of the one of the most exciting features. Um, so previously, when you connected to a peer, you have to resolve the, no the domain name of the peer. And it was a blocking operation because JDK was doing that for us. But we're going to do that by ourselves. And we're going to do that in our event loop, IO event loop. So, which it, so it is going to be completely non-blocking. So if you're going to connect to thousands or tens of thousands of different nodes, host, then this will be a huge help. And SOX and HTTP proxy support is also going to happen in 4.1. And also another interesting one is Android support. So we're going to support Android officially. Uh, some people might ask why. Uh, uh, I'd say it's because Android devices are getting more and more popular, I, I mean powerful. And uh, as it is, pop it is powerful, um, for example, you could write your Netty server application on the server side. So you run your Netty application to serve traffic, and you have it, your Android application. It's written in Java. And if you can use Netty in Android, you could also reuse some portion of your networking code in your Android application. So it will be pretty useful for those who are interested in Android. And also, we are also, at the same time, we are also thinking about its future. Um, 4.0 will not happen anytime soon. So I'd say it's, a, it's an experimental release. And these items are, are rather false. These items rather falls into some research topics. But you might be interested. So some users report. Uh, rep Repe repeatedly told me that they need 64-bit buffer addressing because they want to deal with memory area memory regions which is larger than two gigabytes. Yeah, it's becoming more and more viable these days. So we're going to consider that, and also uh, in traditionally Netty. In Netty, it, it was not very easy to apply very accurate back pressure, uh, but we want to change that too. It doesn't necessarily mean that Netty, you cannot apply back pressure, but if you want to apply very, very accurate back pressure like um, shaping traffic, like limiting the throughput of a client to three kilobytes per second, for example, then it's, it is a little bit tough. So we're going to tackle that problem, too. And another interesting thing is user space TCP UDP stack. Uh, so in my understanding, uh, it's going to increase the throughput by another factor uh, for many reasons, and also uh, we are also thinking about non-blocking IO-friendly parser generator. 
so far, the parser generator, generators like Java CC or uh, AntLR are, are generating blocking parser, uh, which means it works only with Java input stream. So it has to, it must be, the inbound data must be blocking source. So if there is not enough data, the parser will just block. It doesn't just know what to do when there is nothing left in the stream. So the new parser generator is required to generate a protocol decoder that works with non-blocking connection. For example, if we have this sort of parser generator, we could build highly performing protocol decoders for well-defined protocols like HTTP and some others very easily instead of hard coding our decoders. And also, I'm not sure this is going to happen or not, but I want to also invest on alternative system languages. Of course, I'm not saying we're definitely going into that direction, but uh, we're definitely considering to explore if, to see if this is a viable option and it's gonna give us a, give us better performance or better resulting user experience. So, why are we doing all this and all this? It's because of our mission. So somebody would say we are ambitious, but the mission, our mission is opening the future of network programming. So the way we program a network application has been evolved over and over again. So um, pre in a long time ago, we were very unhappy with writing clients and servers, but now we love our framework and we believe that our framework changed how it feels like writing a network application. So uh, we want to continue this effort and make it even better and better. Um, so if you are interested in our effort, you could join. So it's never too late because it's a project, it's a very organic project and it continues to evolve. Uh, for example, there are areas of immediate impact. You can contribute any, at any time. For example, um, we didn't really try to make sure that our API is friendly to Java 8 Lambda functions. So you could ensure that and if there is a problem, you could help us improve that. And if you work with some standard protocols which is not part of Netty yet, you could also con think about contribute, think about contributing that. And for now, the native transport is only working for Linux, but you could also contribute for Windows, Solaris, FreeBSD, Mac OS X, whatever. And Android. Uh, for now, we do not. We do not test automatically to ensure Android compatibility. So, uh, if there is a test suite that runs in our CI server, that would be great. And also, you could contribute documentation, or if you are using Netty already, you could publish just case studies, white papers, or just blog posts, that would be great. Yeah, that's it. <laughs>